Hello, I'm Don Hammock, Sports Information Director at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Bulldog Blitz, an exciting rivalry episode. Number four Bulldogs win 41-14 over Pearl River here at AL May Memorial Stadium. We're going to talk with Coach Jack Wright, running back Chandler Chapman, and defensive lineman Tylen Cole about the game while we take a look at some highlights. Then we'll introduce you to linebacker Montrell Chapman when we play 10 questions. Our last segment will be on the national champion Gulf Coast Bulldogs golf team. They're on the bus even as we speak, headed up to Indiana to participate in the NJCAA championship preview event up at Plymouth, Indiana. Stick around. Here on the field with Gulf Coast head coach Jack Wright after a resounding rivalry game win over Pearl River 41 to 14. Jack, your overall thoughts on how y'all performed tonight? Um, just couldn't be more pleased. We executed when we needed to, it wasn't perfect. There's always gonna be some things you, you point at and wanna do better, but um, I'm, I'm happy because I, I see us getting better. And uh, that's all you can ask for as a coach is just improve and I see us doing that. Uh, let's st uh, start with the regulators. They gave up some yardage in the in the ground game, but, but made them keep going over and over again and eventually got them stopped. Was that kind of the game plan against them? No, we wanted to stop <laughs> everything, you know, at the line of scrimmage, but um, they, they came out, Pearl River was ready to play. That was evident. It's a rivalry game. Their emotions uh, were running high, just like ours were. Um, and they had a great opening drive. They had a good plan to run the football on us, and they did that. Um, but I'm really, really proud of our defensive coaches, Coach Schufelt, Coach McDougal, Coach Rod. I mean, they've, they've seen it all. They've, been, they've got a lot of experience, and they made some adjustments there early in the game. Didn't wait till halftime. You know, waited, made some early in the game. and. Um, it helped our guys play a little faster and catch up to what they were doing. Yeah, after that first drive, you were able to clamp them down, and then you got a turnover on their second possession, which really let you extend the lead. Right. Uh, turnovers always help. Uh, I'm not glad we capitalized on that. You know, we, we had a really good drive after the turnover, but um, now our secondary there was in zone coverage, kind of saw the ball come out of his hand, and, and uh, we're in a good spot there. So you know, anytime you get a turnover, you know, your offense now puts a little, puts a little pressure on the offense, but, but we came through. And I, we always talk about it, uh, you know, you, you roll a lot of guys in and out, you play everybody who's, who's available to play, and that certainly helps keep guys fresh. Yeah, um, I'm just glad it's not 100 degrees anymore, Don. I mean, if it seems like our kids could play a little longer tonight, and that, I think that paid off for us too. We'll go to the offense. It was big play after big play. Trey Hall had a couple long runs. Um, what did you see out of y'all's running game? Um, he's a home run hitter, you know. But we've, we've got other running backs too, but Trey is definitely the headliner, the big play guy. Uh, Chandler finally got on the touchdown uh, uh, wall today. So he's been, he's been earning one for a long time. So i just really pleased with the running game. I think we put up a lot of yards. You know, I haven't, don't know the stats, you know, that well yet, but we put up a lot of yards in the run game. Of course, anytime you have some long runs like Trey made, that, that's going to add up. Over 340 yards uh, was the last number right. I saw. Uh, and, and we're going to talk with Chandler here one-on-one -on -one coming up. The um, He averaged almost six yards a carry, got got things done. He's such a tough runner and able to, to make people miss and, and, and run over people too. Ch Chandler's just, you know, really, really good running back. We've had some really good ones here in my seven years. He's as good as any of them. You know, what, you, what people don't see is how good he is you know, protecting the passer, catching the ball out of the backfield, uh, making communications calls in, co in coordination with the offensive line, and he seems to be perfect in all those areas that don't always show up. Y'all didn't throw it a ton, but you were able to make plays in the passing passing game as well. We did. Uh, you know, we could have thrown it more, but, you know, Don, from the sideline, when you're calling runs and they're working, it's hard to get away from that. So I thought Landon was, was accurate tonight. I thought our receivers definitely made some plays in man-to-man -man coverage. And so... Um, you don't always know when a team's going to play you in man. You're going to be able to make plays or not. So just really pleased that we were able to, to make some. What does it mean in a rivalry game to get a win like that? You know, you get a pretty convincing win. It's always fun, you know, right after the game. It, it's fun for, you know, the folks that are local that keep up with it. But from my perspective, Don, it's one more critical South Division win, and that's what we need the most. Breaks the tie top the South Division, move into first place all alone here. Um, something 
new for us. We got a bye week coming up. How are y'all going to uh, attack that extra time? You know, I, I kind of wanted to see where we were before we came up with a thorough plan. I've got some ideas on how we're going to approach that next week. You're right, it is new. Um, you know, we need to use that to get some guys healthy. You know, we, we've been able to kind of uh, band-aid up a little bit pretty good at a couple of spots. So we got we got to get some guys back. But, Don, we've got to get better. We've got to get better. That needs to be the focus for our staff. That needs to be the focus for our players. We need to continue to improve. We are getting better. We just need to take it to a new level. Yeah, it's a whole thing of rest versus keeping sharp. And and uh, I know you all will figure out the, the plan to do it and then come back strong the next week. Right, right. So being 5-0 and going to the bye week, you know, it, it's going to be – it's a different approach than if you were, you know, kind of behind the, on the division standings. You'd have, you kind of have to look at it a little differently. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you. Here on the field with sophomore running back Chandler Chapman from Bay St. Louis. Chandler, 22 carries, 130 yards tonight. Uh, How did it feel running the rock? Felt good. Uh, everything was opening up. I could tell off the first run. When Trey broke the first one, I got in, I broke mine. I knew it was going to be a good game. You uh, averaged almost six yards a carry. Trey, I think, averaged double digits again. Y'all were able to really gash him. What was working for y'all in, in the run game? Um, inside zone was really working. Outside zone was working. We just put a lot of trust in our coaches and our whole line. What did you see from the uh, from the O-line tonight? They, they got a real big push off the O-line tonight. They got a real big push. Even when we got close to the red zone, it was like they got stronger. We had a real big push. You got your first touchdown of the of the season, right? Yes, what, sir. Uh, what, what was that play? That play, that was that was outside zone play. They set the edge for me real well, and I had them on my back, and I just kept moving my feet. Kept Feel, moving my feet. Feels yeah. good to get on the on the ready. scoreboard, doesn't you? Been praying for it. Been praying for it. Um, what did you see out of the regulators tonight? They had a, an interception early that got y'all set up and, and really kind of turned the game for y'all. We, we was ready. As soon as I – them boys, I had my faith in them the whole time. They was down. They was down a little bit. Told them to get back up. I knew, I knew by the second quarter we was going to have them. You're from kind of that neck of the woods of Pearl River. What does it mean to, to beat them? Uh, it means a lot. I have, I have some friends from Slidell that, that go over there. Um, we had a quarterback that was over there last year. I have I have a lot of family over there too, so it, it's a lot, you know, something to talk about. Feel good to get the rivalry win. Yes, sir. All right, yes, congratulations, sir. Chandler. Thank you. Here on the field with sophomore defensive lineman Tylen Cole from Meridian, Regulators uh, played pretty well tonight. What do you think uh, of y'all's performance? Oh yeah, so we played real good. Real, um, so we played real good. We we, we stopped the run. So we, so that first drive it was a little shaky, but we pulled through at the end. Did y'all? What changes did y'all make early to try and, and get uh, them slowed down? So at first, so we was in like a healer call, but then so we just went back on to, to the basics and just stopped it. More of just like man on man kind of stuff, just and man just on man, yes. just just beating your your opposition. Mm -hmm. um, you guys got a big turnover early, um, that really kind of helped turn the turn the game around. You know what happened on that play behind you? Um, so we just. Um, so we got pressure on the quarterback and so made him throw a bad ball. This you were talking about the Pro River running game. Y'all's running game was just running crazy. They ran for over 300 yards. You kind of come to expect that from your offense, don't you? Mm -hmm. Trey Hall, Chan, so them my guys. So this is who I hang with. So I know what they can do. Them my guys. It's a big rivalry game. It's your second Pro River game. What did what did getting the win tonight mean for y'all? So it means a lot, man. You know, them guys, so they don't like us, we don't like them. So it's just good to get the win. And I never lost to them, so that's good, too. That's it. You guys will, won't have a game next week. I know you won't get the week off, but uh, what are you expecting uh, coming up here for this next seven days? Just to get better so every day. So that's it, really. Just to get better every day. Congratulations. Next team. Congratulations, Tylen. I, I got you a good highlight coming. Thank you. Gonna be a hot one out there for move-in weekend, Ole Miss. Good luck this year, Red. You did it. You're home. I can't wait for you to discover the true meaning of Hotty Toddy. It's a cheer that connects us all to the red and blue. It's the moment that begins when you step on campus and continues long after you turn your tassel. I can't wait for you to discover your legacy and make the world a better place. Are you ready? Let's play 10 questions with linebacker Montrell Chapman. My name is 
Montreal Chapman. I'm from Basin, Mississippi. Basin was like a small town. Like back in the day, they had a strong pipeline about football. Growing up in Bayfield, they, they had set us to a high standard with, in sports and stuff, like, because, you know, back in, back in the day, 11 state championships was hard, like, and them guys, was, they would build different, I'm going to say. I started playing football with my 7 8 Little League, Little League Tigers, with Coach Fred and them, yes, sir. I, was, I had potential, like, they were trying to bring it out of me, but literally, I was just running around, having fun. I love football so much because it can give you an opportunity to change your family. And um, it's just fun. Like, I love reading the offense and just, I love defense. Like, defense, the schemes, everything about it. Brett Schufelt, man, he, he, brought, he brought everything out of me. Like, since I got here, I came, I graduated high school. And um, December came up here in January, and ever since then, because Shu's been pushing me, my full potential. Like, he, he just bring everything out of me, and I thank him for that. My favorite athlete is going to be, I say Fred Warner. He, 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 he's the, he the one going right now. Like, he the one, like, you need to look up to. Like, he got some good details and help you on your, um, on why you on the field. I say NBA young boy because I, I can relate to him and he just like he keep peace and like like on game days he give me hype. He the one I go to. Probably I'll go with Tenders. I love Tenders. My favorite restaurant is Jacks and they got some good comeback sauce and good like good fries and seasoned fries and. It's always hot and ready, always. One thing some somebody don't know about me is like, um, I got a big heart, I got a good heart. But out here on the field, you won't know that. Like around practice, around these guys, you will not know I have a good heart. Like, it's just how you gotta be. It'll be Marcus House, Chop, ever since we got here. He had my back and I got his back. And we just keeping God first and keep going on this journey we got. My mama got me a car, Chrysler 300 is 2018. Yeah, I love that gift. Brad Thornton's Gulf Coast golf team won the school's second national championship in the sport in May up in Joplin, Missouri. They're on the way up to Indiana to play in the NJCAA preview event, getting ready for the next national championship next May against a powerful field. Let's introduce you to Brad Thornton and his 2024-25 Bulldogs. I mean, I think coming in as the defending national champions that, uh, you know, you got the target on your back, but, you know, the opportunity to, to go defend that championship is something these guys have, have been super excited for, pumped up for. Uh, we got a great schedule with some great competition ahead this year, so really looking forward to seeing how this year pans out. Uh, it meant a lot. I mean, these guys have sacrificed a, a ton over the past few years, uh, not just this class, but classes prior. And, you know, to finally have it come together and to close things out and, and to get that championship uh, really means a lot uh, for the school, for the community, uh, and for our golf program especially. The month of September has been busy. Uh, we started out in Michigan last week with a couple of uh, NCAA and NAIA opponents and some other junior college opponents. Uh, we were able to get a few really good quality wins. Uh, Odessa College out in Texas is the top junior college uh, in Division I. And, and we were really able to compete with some solid Division uh, Division II NCAA talent. Uh, Grand Valley State tracked us down there at the end. But to compete with such a high quality opponent at their home course and have a chance coming down the stretch, uh, that's really what we're looking for in the month of September and then following up uh, this coming week as we head 
head up to Indiana to play, you know, some of the top ranked teams in our own classification of junior college. I think it's going to be great to see Kirkwood, Parkland, Iowa Central, and just a few of those schools before we get back in up there in May. I mean, we'll start out with, with Peyton Russell uh, from Gaucher. Peyton comes in after a great uh, freshman year, trying to get a little bit more consistency in his game. Uh, we've seen that growth. He's going to get a lot of looks as far as transferring out of here and some opportunities to play. A second place finish in the national tournament last year and really closing things out for us the last day. So uh, can't, can't ask for much more from a guy like that. Never never too big of a moment for him. And uh, looking forward to seeing uh, you know some more successes in, in a sophomore campaign. Uh, Stanley comes in after a great freshman season, very consistent freshman year, uh, made all the trips for us and uh, played quite well, gave us some opportunities and some events, really ran away with the region championship at Dance and Rabbit, uh, came into to the, to the fall of this year really getting, getting a lot of looks again, uh, looking for, for his home right now and just really excited to see what his game develops into as a sophomore. Ludwig comes in, a great you know, great adaptation after a tough freshman year, I'll say that. Uh, Ludwig's came in and, and really taken the opportunity to, to hone his game in. He had a great last two rounds in Michigan for us uh, coming in at even par. So if you can get that out of, out of a guy that maybe didn't have as much playing time as a freshman, he comes in right away as a, a sophomore campaign. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what he's got going on this, this, this year. John Mark, uh, you know, very streaky freshman year, but some really good finishes. Had a chance to win down in Gulf Shores as well. Um, you know, looking forward to kind of seeing his game round into shape again. He was leading up in Michigan after the first round. Uh, would like to see a little bit more consistency like you would with any of these freshmen going into their sophomore years. Uh, but the fact that he can go into such a, you know, a high quality field and, and, and lead after day one, uh, really looking forward to seeing kind of how his sophomore year pans out. Garner's come in making tremendous improvements, uh, really buy-in to get inside of that top five and make the travel squad. Um, I think he's made some adjustments over the summer and worked really hard. So the numbers are there. He, the scores are, are much lower and competitive this year. And uh, we'll kind of see where he falls in the lineup as we, as we move forward throughout the fall. Uh, Harlan Yerger transferred in. He redshirted last year at UNT, came, comes in from Oxford. Um, Harlan, uh, a big-bodied guy, he kind of went through, you know, the, his freshman campaign. He kind of saw the routine of what it was like at the elite level. Now we're looking at seeing some more playing time, uh, getting getting that college, those college golf rounds uh, under his belt. Uh, I really think you're going to continue to see some improvements, immense talent, uh, but really, you know, getting some more quality reps on the golf course is going to mean a lot for him. Andrew Miller comes to us from Tupelo, uh, won a state championship there as a sophomore. And uh, Andrew's come in and really competed, uh, got in the van for the first trip up to Michigan. Uh, struggled a little bit, which what you what you would expect in, in a you know, freshman's first college event. But he's you know, fought really hard to, to stay in contention. Uh, he's really competed his tail off for us and, and done a great job uh, you know, making that transition. It's really tough for a lot of freshmen to, to do that, but we'll, we're looking forward to seeing him have a great freshman year. Toby Janes comes to us from England, uh, follows along our study and play pipeline with Stanley. And, uh, you know, Toby gets over here and, you know, you get here in, in August and, and the heat and the transition to different type of golf. He's really fighting through that right now. Uh, lots of high points in his game that we've seen, especially as of late. So looking forward to seeing him continue to transition into this role of college golf. And uh, kid's got a lot of talent, so we're going to see kind of where that brings him as a freshman. Grayson comes to us from Oak Hill Academy, uh, got to compete around a lot of elite talent uh, throughout high school. Um, they're really a, a, you know, a private school powerhouse in the state of Mississippi, so he's been a uh, part of competition at that elite level. You see that in the early stages of his freshman year. Uh, still getting adapted to a few of the golf courses down here, and I think that that's something that you know, he'll continue to improve on really long off the tee, takes advantage with his driver if he can keep it in play. Uh, I think that's something that he can really, uh, you know, bring to the table, gives us a huge advantage. So really excited to see what he brings in his freshman year and uh, really excited about both of these classes. The conference has continued to improve. Our schedule continues to improve. Uh, the events that, that, we're, that we're hosting, uh, the, the quality of the fields, everything is moving, is trending upwards in the, in the state as far as conference play goes. Um, Meridian and East Central are going to be right there at the top, uh, nipping at our heels. Meridian got a, got a few guys that they added in this uh, early class, and East Central's returning everyone from their starting five from last year. So they'll have that experience, the talent's there. And then you got, you know, you got some other teams, Jones, uh, Northeast, Heinz, Colin, they can really slip up on you at any point with some really good play. Uh, maybe not as deep as some of the, as you know as the team we have here, uh, but as far as talent on the on the top end, uh, they can compete for sure any any given week.
You know, our goal is, is a lot simpler than what some people might think. I, it could tell you winning a national championship and I'd be right. And I could tell you winning the region and winning the conference and, and that would be correct too. But, you know, one thing I challenge these guys to do is, is to win every single round that they play. Uh, whether that's in, in, in competition and in tournament play, whether it's against other opponents or whether it's just qualifying against ourselves, you've got to try to beat, uh, to beat somebody each and every day. We want winners on this team, uh, winners in the classroom, winners, winners on campus, winners on the golf course. And, if you can take that mentality day in and day out, you know, I think the, the, the goals that, that you get trophies for at the end of the day, I think those kind of just follow along. Uh, just, just really, you know, blessed to have the facilities that we have, whether it's the, you know, the range on campus, uh, you know, whether it's a quality golf course like where we're at tonight or this afternoon at Grand Bear, uh, Grand Bear, Wind Dance, the Preserve, Fallen Oak, Shell Landing, the Oaks, Sunkiss, Diamond Head, Hattiesburg Country Club, all of these facilities down here do an outstanding job at supporting uh, our, our student athletes and giving them the opportunity to come out and hone their skills. So could not be more appreciative for the community as a whole and their support of the golf program. That'll do it for Bulldog Blitz tonight. We're off next week. In two weeks, we'll be coming to you from East Central after the Bulldogs play in Decatur. We'll see you then.